second of our semifinals tonight at uh, 401 Games in Toronto, PTL semifinals season 10. And we've got uh, PTL season 10 semifinalist Tim here, just uh, just finished a, a barn burner of a game. And Thanks, Devin. Thanks for having me. How you doing, sports fans? Jeff Assiri leaving. Goodbye, Jeff. We are in for a corker of a match. What have we got here? This is going to be one heck of a thing. Well, the uh, the semi or the top cut season of the PTL uh, Prototype Toronto League season ten or milestone tenth season couldn't have come at a worse time in the year, Devin. You know, yeah, regional season was right after Christmas. Uh, we all had to try and book the four of us together on the one night. We had to get Travis and, and Victor down here from Feed Double TV Live. It has been a uh, a marvel of uh, of logistical magnificence. And we got it done. We did. We get a day or done. And you know what? I was happy to be a part of the match that just happened. Um, I'm hoping that you and it was Aaron who was with you, wasn't it? it talk- uh, I was. I was judging. I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember. I was in a bit of a haze actually. I remember talking to you about it five was, uh, times. Christian and Aaron, and they That's were right. enamored with that game. Well, I mean, we Evan and I were trying out a new format um, that we've been pioneering or, or trying to uh, to try out um, oh, Jay Cash on the stream chat here one quarter portion there we go. the magnificence of Uncar plot cannot be understated we were trying out a new format that the PTL is doing called arcs only Evan and I in, in true PTL uh, fashion of course we discussed the tone of the match ahead of time exactly the way Dan and Eric have done here tonight you reach out to your opponent and you just say to each other uh, so what kind of game do we want to have? Do we want to have you know gloves off, top competitive tier match? Do we want to have something mid-tier like ARCs only, which is no turrets and um, no turrets and, and no, no ordinance. Uh, ordinance? Well, ordinance is a, is a tough one. So we we talked um, we uh, we talked about ordinance versus munitions. So an ordinance is like artillery or cannon or something like that. And the theme of arcs only was to be just arcs only, no turrets and no bombs and, or no yeah. disposable weapons. So that's what we said, munitions in the end. Um, but this game, this looks like a, a fantastic game coming up. We've got uh, Eric flying Fenrau in three blue squadrons and Dan flying a local rebel and two Wookiee liberators. Sure. So, I mean, we it's been... Um, I, I don't understand. What are you saying? Sorry. When responding to the chat, read the question from oh, the chat. Oh, read the question. Sorry. I, just, it's, I couldn't yeah. understand what you were trying to read. The viewers <laughs> later, when this goes up on YouTube, where they we don't get the see vast the majority chat. of views, they don't see they the don't chat. They don't see the chat. No, I'm sorry. It was an, in, it was, it, it was an inside failing, joke. I'm failing to pass notes here. It's, you were. I was reading your note three times. I couldn't see it. I, it was an inside joke between me and Jay Cash from the YouTube stream who was ma- who was commenting on the uh, amazingness of Unkar Plutt, and now, I couldn't agree more. What do you, we've got a really open board here huge amount of space right what do you think we're going to see how do you think eric wants to approach this match i mean dan's got to come in and i think he's got to play really cagey because those those blue squadron novices can just put a lot of hurt onto that local rebel i feel and, like there's going to be a lot of dice thrown in this game a lot of dice, <laughs> this, this is be a dice what is this off. is three six nine twelve uh, 15, 18, 20 attack die per round, and that's if they're not at range one. Right. Um, we've got we've got ten on the Lothal Rebels on Dan's side, and we've got eleven on Eric's side. Yeah, and and as a, a, a total of only ten green die as well. Yeah. Not, not a lot of agility in this game. It's gonna be. Uh, imagine it's like you and your best friend. You're just standing in the middle of the cafeteria, just slap fighting each other, just going <laughs> no. <laughs> this is this is this is gonna be this is gonna be rough. So why don't we go through our, our two players? We can talk a little bit about them, and we can go yeah. through each other's lists. And uh, I love chirping Eric and, and Dan's your boy from the East End. You want to yeah. we'll do that way? Dan's great. Dan runs Game School, which is uh, our, our easternmost uh, easternmost PTL venue. Uh, they've got a great little community out there. They always get a couple of guys into the top cut. Uh, this is Dan's first time in the cut, and he loves Wookies. He loves the. The Azatuck gunship. He loves the ghost, so he's he's well, run that a couple. Of, he's run the ghost a couple of times in a couple of different variants. He beat Kelvin Lau on his way up. Imagine trying to fly an X-wing list while simultaneously running a business. Yeah, you don't want to have a list on the table that requires you to think four or five moves in advance. No, he uh, he does also enjoy castling and almost brought three upsilons to castle if he were to play you. 
If you were to play me, if, oh really? Well, yeah. I, I love the uh, the Castle Dracula. That that, sh that stuff is fun. Yeah. So we've got uh, Dan uh, setting up his Wookie Liberators and oh, the the Lothals. Uh, he calls this list Fur Shield. The Fur Shield. I love it. Yeah. I love everything about it. It's. Uh, so he's got draw their fire. He's got selflessness. He's got Wookie com commandos. He can help keep that Lothal alive. But that Lothal has to do a lot of damage to these blue squadrons. Well, exactly. I mean, one of the things to keep in mind here, of course, Dev, is that uh, the entirety of Dan's list is going to get to fire before uh, three quarters of Eric's list. So, Absolutely. I mean, he's going to get the opportunity to delete one of these uh, T-70s before they get to shoot. And to your point, he's got selflessness, he's got draw their fire, he's got some damage mitigation uh, techniques. But let's be fair, those really aren't damage uh, elimination techniques. It's a way for you to spread the damage out, but it doesn't mean that the Wookiees aren't taking damage to do it. Absolutely. You can keep some of those gross crits off of the off of the Lothal, which is going to lose its shields really fast. You can push maybe a direct hit or a blinded pilot onto a Liberator's shields. Right? Would you say that it's fair to say that I've flown a VCX or two in my day? Yes. <laughs> You've flown uh, quite a few of those, uh, what we used to call sumo wrestling lists. The sumo wrestling list, the double the double big ship. So there's one thing I can tell you about flying a ghost, is there's about four or five cards in that damage deck yeah. that are just game over. And, and especially when you've got Hera, yeah. one of them is uh, Major Hull Breach, where every card is dealt face up. That sounds beautiful. S especially if you get it like one or two damage cards in, and then you've got the potential to take like eight crits after that. It's not fun. All right, let's go through uh, the Eric's player on the list uh, here. Here we have the current sitting Halifax, Nova Scotia regional champion Eric of 2018, yep. so Eric Zhang. No, uh, no salt coming from the East Coast, even though it's all in the air because of the ocean. They, uh, they had a great time. There's all, all the salts on the West Coast. That's true. Yeah. This, the Sea to Sky guys, I hear it's... Uh, I mean, they should they should nickname themselves Goderich Ontario, but you know. Yeah, there you go. They just they, I mean, they had some Ontarians on, and we just spilled salt everywhere. That's it. The, I listened to that podcast, and folks for listening in. There's a uh, any podcasting streaming service. You just search for the Sea to Sky podcast. Uh, they're great guys out of Vancouver, and they've had some of our talent from the PTL on as guests. Um, I mean, they haven't invited me yet, <laughs> and I'm not salty about that at all. But looks, uh, looks like we've got the game underway here. All right. Well, Eric Z's list uh, is fairly self-explanatory, I should say. Yeah. He's got uh, three T-70 X-Wing Blue Squadron Novice PS2s Using with Flight Assist flight Astromech. Yeah. Using the Flight Assist right now. Flight Assist Astromech is a fantastic brand new one-point droid. Very simple. says if you move, and then you have nobody who's your enemy in your arc. Uh, at range 1 to 3, you get a free boost or barrel roll. The free boost action on a T-70 is all well and good, but what really blows a lot of people's minds are what type of capabilities these ships now have with a barrel roll. More importantly, it's a free beautiful. barrel roll. I mean, these ships have almost never in the history of X-Wing been able to barrel roll unless they are uh, equipped with BB-8 or, uh, or they have something like expert handling as an EBT on them. For, for three of them to fit in a list like this and to be as nimble as they are, especially a strap a one-point prime thruster to them or something like that, they become an entirely new beast altogether. Now, Eric's kept them pretty slim. He's been used to four-ship lists, of course, because uh, over the weekend in Halifax, he was running uh, a pretty competitive metal list now, which is uh, Alan Fung has coined it Nuked. Uh, I'm not sure if he came up with the name or whether it came from the internet, but we all love the name, and we got to we got to uh, quick get, draw on three, three yeah, N U Q D nuked. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's uh, it's a quick draw on three gunboats, and the final ship in Eric's list is probably wow. the, yeah the most efficient 25 points that you can spend. Um, 25 points gives you Fen Rao at PS, uh, I believe 10. So if we can just get Travis to correct that PS up to 10, I assume he's gone up to 10. Uh, not that it matters in this particular matchup, but for most parts, uh, he'll always go up to 10. Yeah. So that he I can mean, move it last. It doesn't really matter in this matchup. No, not at all. I mean, but it, for the for the sake of education, it's, it's important to uh, today. I mean, putting him up to 10 gives you the ability to move last and then shoot first. And why is it, Devin, that a ship like Fen Rao, equipped with flight assist astromech as well, there's that free boost, benefits from 
uh, moving last and shooting first with this particular loadout. So he's got he's going to be able to use Hotshot Copilot and Fenrau's ability. I love Hotshot Copilot. To shut down two ships around. So what Fen's ability says is he can take a stress to choose a ship when it activates and prevent it from any spending any tokens or modifying its dice in any way. You know, like, I gotta give. I don't often give credit to the Carolina crates, but I will in this case about their alternate art. Uh, hot shot co-pilot uh, card which just of course says hot co-pilot on it with a picture of a, a well-endowed beautiful woman on it it's one of my prized possessions i use it every chance i get and so he's going to be able to prevent one ship with his ability from using its uh tokens to modify its dice and he's going to be able to use his hot shot co-pilot to strip focuses from other ship from a second ship so essentially removing a lot of dan's ability to modify his dice Oh, completely. And when you, you couple that with the fact that everybody that shoots at Fen has to spend their focus. I mean, for Fen to be PS10 is one thing. But let's 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 run through the hypothetics here for a second. If Dan shoots all three of his ships at Fen Rao, he now loses his focus tokens on. Uh, well, I guess in this case it's nothing. No, he's never going to have a focus with a ghost. He's never going to have uh, anything but a reinforce on the Wookies. I take it back. You take it back. Hotshot co-pilot's about as useful as tits on a bull right now. He's going to be able to shut down the Lothal. Shut down the Lothal how? Yeah. The Lothal has Ezra Bridger. He wants to be stressed all the time. But he's not going to be able to use his target locks. He's not going to be able to re-roll to get those focuses. Oh, I guess, yeah. If Fen, if Fen takes a stress, then he can do that. Yeah, sure. No, you're right. You're and right. he's got Dorsal Turret. He doesn't have uh, um, a Auto Blaster Turret or... Uh, uh, TLT, so you know, a dorsal turret's going to be an interesting choice to see how that turns out for him in this match, and he'll have to be really relying on that that uh, that target lock to both shoot and modify his dice there. No, you're quite right. So, uh, just a quick shout out on the stream to Scott Ross uh, chiming in from London, Ontario. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for chiming in uh, live tonight, sir. Always good to see you guys on the stream. Uh, we got somebody, Jay Cash, who chimed in earlier about the Wookiees. We got a four so, straight from Eric here. Jeez, he's really going in yeah. quick, now, eh? is it would be interesting here to see if Flight Assist does trigger, which I think he's going to uh, check for. Yeah, you got to check there, Eric. Now it is, I would, I see, I wouldn't have done that, to be honest with you. Because I think if the Lothal does a, a leisurely one bank, he's only going to have maybe two X-Wings in range. I doubt Fen will be in range here. I mean, if Dan went with a two hard... With everything. A too hurry hard, hard, hurry hard, then... Uh, but with the way that the Wookiees are locked in in the back, right? Even if the Ghost does a one turn, the Wookiees have to turn much harder to get around it. Right, right? So unless, Dan, unless Dan is my hero and did like two, three turns with the Wookiees and then just like one straights with the Ghost. I think a, a one, uh, a three turn with the, the number two Wookiee still bumps. And I don't think the Wookiees have a, a, one, a one heart. So. Well, the other thing we got to remember, too, is they're all PS3. Dan can move them in any order he wants. Yeah, absolutely. Dan was talking before the game about how much that's something he tries to emphasize in his list is having them all the same PS so he can move them however he wants. Absolutely. Oh, sweet, merciful Joseph. Oh, I was just saying, Dan, please 5K. Dan, please 5K. Oh, oh the no. Two. So maybe we can get a, a hard three from number three. That'll fit around it, and then a hard two from the other one will fit it right in back, yeah, I'm right in behind. I'm really surprised that Dan didn't opt to uh, to one turn or three turn here, get Ezra Bridger going. I guess he can get his fire control system. No, he's going to evade. He's going to evade. He's going to use that front cannon on that thing. Big Ford ice out the front. Range two on some uh, some poor X-Wings. Yeah, except I know the angle's a bit skewed, but I'm pretty sure that every single one of Evan's T60, uh, T-70s could probably fit a 4K in there next turn. I really feel that Eric they has... Can, they can certainly all talon roll. Well, I mean, big open spaces are really great for ghosts and, and, and squad flying, but I really feel like Eric has analyzed the distance mechanics here and, and judged accordingly and correctly, foreseeing a four straight boost from Fenrir. The four straight on the sheath of Pete is white, isn't it? Yeah, I believe it is. The yeah. I love the sheath of Pete. No, no, the four straight is red. Yeah. Is it not? No, I, I swear on my... Oh, the five red? He's got a five. No, it's got a four K. Oh gosh! So it shows up about in the new ships. I haven't even flown my sheet of yet. There you go. The four is red because he's doing the three. Fair enough. Yeah. 
So I, I promise uh, Scout's Honor here not to take any royalties or ask for any royalties from Disney, talking of the Sheath of Peed. Um, quick shout out to everybody who's a big fan, like myself. I believe it's February the 15th or February the 19th. I'm not entirely sure, but the second half of the last season of Star Wars Rebels is going to be launching on Disney XD. Now, I think this is an excellent position for Eric. He's got a lot of range three shots. Ben Rao looks like he's in range, so Dan's not going to be able to spend his, any tokens on attack, but he's not going to be attacking. All right, so we got a range just, three from Fen, two versus one. And we're just going to have a bunch of pain into the Volta Rebel this turn. Eric can slow roll all the ships next turn, and we'll see what happens. Scott Ross talking about our no sultry damage. baritones. Apparently he's in love with your voice, Devo. Uh, it happens from time to time. It's popular with the ladies. I have, a, I have a face for radio. Let's put it that way. Thank you, Samuel M. It is the 19th of February for Star Ooh, Wars Rebel. That's not what Dan wanted to see. That is not what you want to see. But he's fine, and he, he's got his... Uh, He's got these cute little sticker Star Lords that are he's using in his fire control system. I approve. Interesting cup ships. Well, I mean, it's I mean, it was no need to activate Fen Rao's ability in that turn. Fen no. Rao's ability, of course, says when an enemy ship in your firing arc at range one to three activates during the combat phase, reminding everybody, of course, that activating uh, so refers to when it's their hits, turn to shoot. Two hits from a Wookiee and. Blanks from Ouch. Eric. Uh, Fen Rao may take a stress token to say that you can't re-roll dice or spend focus tokens. The other Wookiee oh, shoots two. Same X-Wing, taking oh. one more. So that X-Wing took three. Shields down. Yeah. Shields down on number two. And now uh, Eric gets to return fire. So we've got range from all four of them. We know this, of course, because Fen had range. Mm-hmm. So we're going to do number two first. The range two shot. Oh, uh, look at that. Focus for hit, hit, crit. Eric's very excited about that. Uh, I mean, that's just three off the Lotho. It's just into it. Yeah, you know, I've flown enough ghosts. And here's the, here's the difficult part where you decide whether or not you're going to spend your evade token. In my, in my opinion, the best time to spend your evade token is when you get to the end of your shields. Oh, looks like Dan spent uh, his evade token there, so yep. only took two. Only took yeah. two shields. I like spending it Producer at the... Producer Travis catching it before uh, Before, before we, we even did. got it, yeah. yeah. Oh, another excellent shot from Eric, pushing, and pushing another three through, although Dan gets a... Oh, is he going to proc selflessness here? He's thinking about it. We can see him fingering the card. Oh, he pulls it off, so one of the Wookiees... No. Shields well. down on Wookiee Liberator number three. Very interesting choice. Yeah, I mean, spending the evade token when you get to the end of the local shield, so you're trying to negate a crit with shields and stuff like that. That's looks usually like the best range way. two from number four as well. Hit crit. There you go. So looks like Dan might get the opportunity to draw their fire here. They draw their fire to number two. Takes one shield from the local. Not sure exactly what they're talking about at the moment, but they'll get it sorted out in just one second. Actually, Tim, it looks like he already drew their fire at least once this turn, so we should get... Uh, oh, so the Lothal's actually only lost one shield then. I see, okay. Yeah. Draw their fire is once per turn, is it not? Thanks for that for round, folks. We're just going to get a quick damage uh, update on uh, which mechanics Dan has used. Thank you for saying so, Johnny Ca or Jay Cash. I should do voice acting for Wookiee Royal. Oh, I agree. Absolutely. It's hard. You have to remember, it's just like um, when you're trying to speak with a Scottish accent. You've got to hook the hook and get the, the rolling going for the Wookiee. So, Tim. Sir. Do you think that Eric's just going to K-turn or Talon roll all of his ships? Or do you expect him just to, I expect him to just slow roll, just do a one forward with all of them? I, my, my tactics for fighting squadrons with ghosts is a little bit different than other people's. Uh, I mean, I've fought against you enough times. I've fought against Philip Gales with his rebel swarms enough times. My tactics have always been, if I can dodge one arc because of position and bump into another person, I'm golden. I don't even care who I'm shooting at. Yeah. I don't care if it's the same one I have a target lock on or not. Because if I can avoid one arc and bump into one person, that's two ships that aren't shooting at me. So you think he's just going to ram right into them? Well, the other thing you have to keep in mind here... I mean, he needs the stress to, to get Ezra, and that fire control system... Well, right. Will, will, 
I mean, he's going to bump into number two, and then that's who he's got his target lock on. He's not going to be able to shoot his doors to Except all of Eric's uh, ships have to move first. Yeah. And the only question that remains is will Eric one forward with number three and bump to block Dan's that, that 5K? 5K? I mean, that's what I was going to ask you about is do you do the 5K here or do you do a, a two hard out to one of the sides? And get that dorsal turret shot on number two, or maybe fire that. Oh, well, he doesn't have something docked. He can't shoot that back uh, back arc. So it's exactly what I was just going to say. Is to keep in mind that this Lothal Rebel is um, far more exposed than other cases because without a attack shuttle or sheath the docked on the back of that shot, he has no rear arc active. So it is a front arcs only match as well. Um, this is another example of our, our new format that we're trying. Uh, well, it's he's got a dorsal turret and, and all sorts of stuff in there. Yeah, so. <laughs> dorsal he's turrets. Got, he's got the extended sure. 180 arcs on the, sure. the Azatuck gunship I mean, from sure. one episode of Rebels that one time. I mean, sure. You could take the dorsal turret and put two breach specialists on the Wookiees, and then I'd be, oh, they've got Wookiees, that's right, Wookiee commandos. Sure. So those Wookiee commandos are beautiful, Tim. <laughs> They're beautiful. This is a lovely card. It's a great one-point crew for, for the Ezzetux. See, what I would love here is if Dan went just YOLO. If he did a three-hard right. Yeah. And he was That's the stress it, we're looking for. If he was managed to get blocked by number four with that three-hard right and maintain an arc on Fen, it'd be laughing. So um, now Eric's activating number three first. Yeah, I would one. Yeah, he's gonna one forward bump with number three to try and block the five k, because you know ideally Dan wants to keep the guns on number two because that's the one that's damaged, mm -hmm. and he can't rely on the Wookies to finish it. The gun, the ghost has to get its guns into the fight. That two bank for the block. Correct. He's gonna go for. I mean, the two bank is the right move here because what he's trying to do is to minimize the arc rotation. One of the best things that I can recommend for people to remember when you're fighting against big ships is. They have a massive amount of arc rotation per micron. Unlike a small base ship, every single micrometer that they rotate in either direction drastically changes the amount of area on the board at range three that they can cover. So, I mean, here, Eric's in a just lovely spot to get three, possibly, yeah, possibly two range one shots and possibly a range two shot from the That's going to be great. So that we do have the hard three there. Oh, no, 5K? So the question will be whether or not the ghost fits in no, the intervening we need, we space. Need, uh, yeah, we need a judge in there pretty quick. I'm yeah, pretty so sure. we're going to move it back to where it was for yeah. sure. It's exactly where it was. Yeah, so we got our judge there, no problem. So the question here, folks, and this is for a little bit of the less... Uh, um, uh, seasoned players is a lot of people would just look at that and say oh it's a bump well there's a very important question here and the question is does the ghost fit uh, between number four and number three if his base plate fits in the intervening space between number four and number three then just like I said Dan is absolutely laughing because yeah I mean absolutely that that uh, that fits they should proxy and remove number two and, uh, well, they're just checking to see right now, right? So the ghost is roughly back where it was. It doesn't matter where he is along the five, as long as the five is lined up properly. So there's the fi five flat, right? And then we just check to see if the base plate fits. It looks like it fits to me, folks. So that, just like I said earlier, now... I mean, that's better positioning for Dan. That is the, the most ideal position for Dan, because he has yeah. dodged two arcs, and he now has a dorsal turret shot on number two, which is the damaged one. And he's probably going to one forward with both the Wookiees and lay into them as well. Yeah. So they're still having a conversation about this, folks. All you have to do is line the ghost back up like that. I mean, on Vassal, uh, Dev, this is super easy. Just press the C key and it does it for you. But when you're on the table with somebody else, this is exactly why it's so important to have an impartial third person. If, you, if you're playing for all the marbles. Yep. If you're playing for all the marbles, you need somebody by to make these exact types of observations and uh, things. But if you're not... You can fly casual and just discuss it with your opponent and have fun. But for for uh, for a top cut match like that, um, and we're all pretty casual around here, you can see that you know Dan's uh, Dan's probably didn't realize that. Uh, that and Dan that's the should case. have a stress there on his. Uh, 
Yeah, of course. I mean, they're going to catch that in just one quick second. It's no problem because he did do a failed red maneuver. So, so the one uh, forward here from Dan sporting his uh, his PTL barrel roll template. One which is template. lovely, I should say. It's beautiful. I utilized those myself in the last game. I had a very very clutch barrel roll with Fen Rao at one point. Reinforces both fronts of his ships. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to do that. I mean, uh, Dan is in a fantastic opportunity spot right now to alpha Fen kill Rao number in two. A, in a very safe spot. Looks like he's out of Oh, art. that looks like a bump. All right. Oh, that's, that's in arc then. We will find out in one second whether or not that is in arc. I would probably ignore Fen Rao at this point. Uh, he's got a, a three-die dorsal turret shot. At well, that's what I mean. Two. I mean, like, Dan is ideally number placed here. Winged. There's the stress we were talking about. Thank oh, you. Glad to see that. I mean, at this point, Dan can actually, like, two-turn right the following turn, stay where he is, mm -hmm. and just – Ezra's active, and he can just stay there and laugh. Ezra shooting at uh, no, Lothal. Fen is, Fen is first. Oh, Fen, yeah, sorry. Fen 22 damage. Two shields on the Lothal Rebel now down to two shields remaining, but he's not taking any more shots this turn. Wow, that was a really lucky 5K move by, uh, by Dan there. Absolutely. I'm not sure if he planned the whole thing, but if not, he's an evil genius. It's great for him. It gets him out of two X-Wing arcs, right? That's uh, eight dice into him. If they'd been uh, range one or seven dice. It's quite the... Uh, in answer to your question, Holy Sorcerer, uh, they don't exist. They are like the, the, the lost Ark of the Covenant. Um, they no longer exist. Each one that actually does exist is worth its own weight in gold. I have two. You can reach out for me, and I will sell you one for $500 U.S., so this is uh, Wookiee gun chips, I suppose. I would say so. Range one on number Shooting two there. Number two. So Only two Ed, damage. Yikes. Eric evaded the, both of them entirely. That's incredible. What? Uh, that's a some wily X-wing. Holy moly! I mean, that's what Eric needed right here to stay in the game. To sort of keep above the the curve in terms of the damage that Dan's putting out. I mean, okay, really so Dan's going to take his dorsal turret shot on the same target. Yeah. So right we're call. See three more. We're seeing Fen Rao's ability active, so Dan will not be able to use fire control system rerolls here. Or he I believe Ezra. Or no, you can't tokens. spend a token. You can still Ezra, but it wouldn't matter. So one damage. And he evades and it. Oh no, he takes it. There uh, you go. No, he's gonna, gonna focus. spend the focus. I wouldn't. I take it. Oh yeah. wow. Oh, oh, there you go. I would well, have kept the focus for offense and try and burn down those Wookiees. Push damage through on those oh yeah, Wookiees. absolutely. And two's the only one with a range one shot as well. Ooh. That's rough. Okay, so we've got the X-Wings about to queue up now. Eric's going to, what's the first rule of shooting? You always shoot at the, shoot the same the target. target. Yeah. That was what we saw in my last game. I, I, it was such a great game. Evan Cameron is a fantastic player. And we can see him here helping out uh, be uh, a judge and uh, watching on this game, making sure everything's all right. Yeah, Evan Cameron's a fantastic player. I mean, he and I both said after our match how, how close it was and how it could have gone either way. I simply could not get two guns two on the hits. same target. you got to keep all your guns two on the evades. same targets. Reinforce so, and an evade. Reinforce and an evade. Those Wookiee gunships, they're brutal. Wow, there has been no damage this turn. Wow, might uh, be one. be damage now. Okay, two, two going through on a Wookiee Liberator number three. Which Range is the three. right choice. Yeah. Range three on number three. Oh, just all paint from Eric. And takes one a crit. Takes a crit, but it's unless Wookie Liberator number two remembers to draw oh, their fire. You can draw their fire. Take that last shield. He sure can. Why are we rolling? Uh, Roy range guys? three. I, I was thinking about that as well. It's so no damage. No damage. So let's Those just recap for a brutal, second man. here. Brutal. We had we had three dice, three red dice from Fen Rao. So three six, uh, and eight. Eighteen. Oh. Twenty one. Boys, 24, your, 24 red dice and net, what, not two damage in that right. turn? Three damage? Yeah, absolutely. And we were talking how it would be an all-damage game, lots of red dice, and here we're seeing you know, very little damage put through that turn. But that's what Eric, that was the turn that Eric needed is to get back in this game. Because of the, because of the way that the positioning ended up, it would be, it's very difficult for him right now, I think, to... So I'd just like to give a big shout-out to the 114 people from our two stream uh, chat uh, uh, channels that are chiming in this evening. Thank you for joining us. Quick poll, straw poll, 114 of you, right down the middle. Who's calling? Who's winning this game? 
It's a good question. I'd love so, to see some votes coming through on the chat, and I'll just tally them down let's here. Let's do one for Eric and two for Dan. You got it. One for Eric and two for Dan. Let's see. And right now, I mean, like we were talking earlier about options. Uh, I mean, you're, options. you're Dan. You've got Hera, right? Like, what do you do? Like, can he... Can he... Like, would you well, 5K here? Would no, you honestly, I, I, re hard? I really wouldn't. Honestly, I would... I would too hard right with the ghost. The next, really? this is not the turn to 5K. It's the next turn that you want to 5K. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think that you're in such a fantastic position right now with the ghost. Uh, if you were to just too hard right, Fen blocks you so you don't move, and all you got to do is stay stressed. You're gonna have a dorsal turret on somebody. What's really a big problem um, is that you're. Uh, you're in a situation now where the Wookiees are almost definitely not going to have um, their reinforced tokens this turn because... Do you think Eric's going to get those bumps off? I think that Eric can probably Talon roll two right with number two and maybe get an arc. And then we have uh, number four could just do a one forward, block one of them, shoot at the other. Number three can three forward, be on the ghost and get a range one shot. And Fen might just want to one forward. I think that's, uh, he doesn't have R2. He's got the, the flight assist like all the other ships. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, where they all end up. Now, Fen, the Fen's way is going to be clear because all the ships are going to move before him. It's the benefit of his high pilot skill. Oh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I got to scale down my baritone here. Oh, do you? Yeah, a little yeah, you, bit. You Blown out of the water. I'm getting yeah. really close to the screen. Well, yeah, we gotta move the mic in a little bit there. No, go. it's fine. I'm just I'm getting really close to the screen to try and read everybody's votes that are coming in. Thank oh, you, we chat. Got, we got another one. Another one. Another one for one. Now, I, I'm just, chat says it's a blowout for Eric. They got almost nine nine votes to, to three or four votes so for, for Dan. But uh, I think I think Eric's list is going to be able to. Dan's list cares less about reposition and can certainly push a drop off Eric's list very quickly. As soon well, as he true. loses one or two X-Wings, it's going to be very difficult for him to come back well, around. Well, true, but I agree with Michael Grubb, who says that he feels Eric's list has a steep drop off yeah. in that if he loses a T-70, his damage output and his ability to cover the area of the map yeah. drops off significantly, whereas Dan has those 180-degree arcs on the Wookiees. Absolutely. And if they're left with one hull at the end of the turn, they still get to shoot the following turn before yeah. you get to shoot at them. Absolutely. So no way, oh, no how is that going to clear. I would be shocked and amazed. But that is the right move. I think. I think just because the angle, it might. And it's a great move though because it, it gets almost him, it gets him at a. Well, it almost definitely blocks both. Um, no, it's it's. Uh, it is it is a talon. It is a talon. Wowzers. We are getting a talon roll here from number. That is a ballsy number two. I tell you. Yeah. Well, you know what it does. It gets him away from the ghost because the ghost has the target lock on him. Dan stressed he's not going to be able to reacquire that target lock this round unless he does a green maneuver to shoot that that dorsal turret. He can't shoot that dorsal turret. He has to swing the ghost around to get those that big front gun back in arc. Well, I'm very surprised that that uh, talent roll fit, and now Eric has himself in a fantastic spot. He can. Uh, he's got that wounded X-wing behind the gunship. Precisely, he can two four with number four block both the Wookies, and then he can shoot at the Wookies with three ships when they don't have reinforce. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah, well, this is, this is... Is he going one or two four? He's just doing the one. Both players, I think, this turn really want to see something off the board. And Eric's now made that very difficult for Dan to do. Oh, you got you got, to be, you, you got that right there, Devo. I mean, number two, Wookiee can still one forward. No chance for flight assist Astromech here for number four. Imagine now, a clutch of barrel roll would be right number here. Number three, Whoa. are we going to see a, a talon roll from number three, maybe? Or a three bank? No, it looks like a two. It looks like a three forward. Three forward, just to clear that big base ship. But he might bump into his own ship here. I think he does. Uh, three bank might have put him. Oh, oh yeah, it helps when you move all these ships around. Classic, helps classic him, Eric. Helps him clear. <laughs> oh, there we go. Evans, Evans, got uh, very precise. Evans very calling the bump. Yeah, which is exactly why having an impartial person there is your third bet. Now it'd be nice for me to see to make sure, but I think that that's no to get the three down but a big base they were touching a big base is two 
and so you would have seen it bumping. Yeah, absolutely. let's just run through what we were just saying. This is great for newer players. So yeah, let, absolutely. Let, so a big base ship is two forward forward. Absolutely. And then your small base ship is one, so that's three forward, which means you would then need another base plate at the end of it for your ship to fit. So he wouldn't have, and he would not have cleared that with a two forward because of the nubs. So because of the way their nubs were touching, it would have just, and there's the 5K from from Dan, which you were saying you didn't want to see. Yeah, I'm a but, little, I'm a little disappointed, but that's all right. I mean, but, but the now the day, it, it gets that big cannon back in the fight, and he's got a shot on Fen Rao. Whereas if he'd done what you suggested, because of Eric's maneuver with the T70 Talon rolling it way out, he wouldn't have had a shot. I agree with what you're saying. What I don't agree with is the idea that if I did Dan not had done, expect that from Dan, that gets. Yeah, he's got, he dodges two arcs, and he's got Fen in arc. Yeah, that's really great. Reinforce the back so he can't take a shot from number four. Now that means we're probably going to see two or three oh, shots on Fen Rao. Danny W. What it, a great maneuver. At this point, I would Calling like to take a moment bump. to just commend the talent yeah. from the Port Union and Lawrence area of Toronto that has grown through game school in the a last two amount. seasons. He's so excited. He's fumbling his reinforced tokens in the rear there. Now, uh, this is not what we need to see for Fen Rao. Fen Rao, like Eric's probably shaking in his boots here. Yeah, Eric's not with, happy about with this With Fen Rao at taking all. 10 dice because he's the only thing that Dan can shoot this turn. <laughs> Samuel M. Hashtag their nubs were touching. Hey. So the, what, what he means is that if two ships are touching uh, front to back Absolutely. and their nubs are actually active between the two, that two they, forward they won't, won't clear. fit. But if the nubs are not touching, correct, they will clear. Yes. It's an amazingly small micron of an inch, but it's a good rule to learn by. And Evan actually called me on that the, the game before, said, are you sure that one forward won't? He's like, no, the nubs are touching. And that's nope. something you learn from vassals. So. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So Fen Rao shooting range one and number three. Saving his focus, he wants to keep alive. Number one three damage. reinforced the rear, and Fen is an arc, so reinforced not active, and number three taking a, a damage. Yeah, perfect. It looks like we're getting a couple of votes uh, swinging in the other direction here. Yeah. So we've got a range three shot. Uh, to answer the CAD one, I'm not telling. You have to watch the video. Yeah, you got to watch the other. got to watch uh, the other video, man. Absolutely. Ezra, active. This is hit, this hit is, crit this on Fen Rao. Uh, that looks like a cock die. Are they going to call it? Nope. No, they don't. They're flying fine. casual. So they take one and the target lock switches. Fen Rao's shields are down. And then number three gets a range one. Here come the Wookiees. Oh. All right. We got a. Oh, thanks, Dan. We got three hits there. Two going through on Fen. Two going through on Fen. Fen so, at half health. Ooh. Now the next Wookiee's attacking at range two. So. Fen has yet to spend his focus token. Three dice on on two green dice. So just to clarify, MBFPR, uh, Fen Rao was not able to barrel roll because Flight Assist Astromech says that you have to have nobody in arc to be able to barrel roll. So uh, we don't know how much damage looks like just another got done. Well, looks like another two going through there. Yep, there goes Fen Rao. Fen's toast. That's a huge suffrage to uh, to Eric's list here. He really needed that damage mitigation because like, now there's nothing to stop that FCS uh, domino effect from the ghost here. And like I said, both of these players wanted to see a ship off the board, and Eric lost a full health ship. So far, this game is arcs only, by the way, Devin, because there has been no Darcel Torment damage. The, uh, no damage, but uh, <laughs> I, what's one damage on, uh, I believe, Wookiee 2? I would say it is probably Wookiee 2, yeah. Oh, a direct hit onto oh, Wookiee wow. 3. Uh, oh my. I believe he was shooting at Wookiee 3. Yeah, direct hit. So wow. Wookiee 3 is down to... I think they're saying that would be two hull left. It's, a, it's an easy mistake uh, there about the flight astromate, so mate. Honestly, I, I, I'm i still getting used to it. It gives them all kinds of... Uh, crazy ability on the approach and more importantly to disengage and re-engage but those flight assist astromechs are they're tough to be useful when you're right in the, the pit fight now that's that was eric's only shot this round right uh, he really was banking on on uh on bumping those wookies and getting some some brawling shots there and uh i expect he's gonna have to do a little bit more to chase them next turn well, let's let's just re, let's just recap here. The 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 call by Dan to dodge two arcs and kill Fen Rao was an excellent call. He dodged three arcs there. Too, he dodged 
Well, yeah, he dodged two arcs with, with both of them, so he's dodged four arcs total. Yeah. Um, here's the question I have for you, though. Was it worth it? Was the juice worth the squeeze? Where are the Wookiees? Where are they going? And how, in the name of all that is holy, are they going to get those T-70s back in arc? So those Wookiees are both going to hard two, and the Ghost's probably just going to slowly trundle forward, just do like a one forward, something like that. Clear that stress, maybe start working around getting a fire uh, a target lock up again, because again, that Ghost's not going to be able to uh, fire its dorsal turret next turn. It's going to have to keep relying on that big front cannon, which now it can't modify because he's stressed, although he does have Ezra, he can change that, that focus to a crit. So geometrically, there's no way for Wookiees to get number two back in arc if he does a one bank left. But I suspect the Ghost will. What I'm trying to say, though, is that if number four and number three, both Talon rolls to their right, and number two comes in with a, a one bank left, Eric will be able to fire with the majority of his list unabraded on the Ghost, and the Wookiees are too far to get draw their fire back into, back into range. I don't think Eric needs to Talon roll. He can three hard with number four, barrel roll over to the to, to board left. Depends on where the Wookiees are. He's got to move. Oh, well, actually, he's you're moving right. first, right? Oh my so goodness! Right, you can do a hard two with number three X-wing. He can might be able to barrel roll. So that flight assist is really going to be able to give him some maneuverability. There. Shock and awe. Well, he can only maneuver if he gets himself in front of those Wookiees. But no, but for Eric to be able to get three guns on the Ghost this turn and get the Ghost down below half health and recover 22 points to offset the cost of losing Fen Rao, I might put him back in this game there, Dev. Not yeah. to mention, the three hard left from number four with the fight assist boost might actually block the Bloody Wookiees to begin with. Yeah, they might. And then we'll see them eating more damage from, the, from his ships in behind. So, like, there's certainly ways that Eric can play this, and certainly flight assist can definitely help. And we'll have to see if Eric has enough practice and can realize that he, he can do that with his flight assist. And we're seeing a 4K here from uh, from Eric with number three, keeping that stress, I would say, keeping that stress on the board, but then he, uh, Evan, deftly removing it there. Mm. Coming right back. So this is, he's lining everything up, and a 4K as well. Not going for the blocks at all, just lining up to get I guess more shots. Eric's taking the opportunity to get his uh, squad back in formation here, Dev. When in doubt with an X-Wing, 4K. Well, I mean, it's it's not great, of course, because if Dan decides to hard two his Wookiee's left and try and come around the top of the board here, number four is going to take all kinds of hurt. He's probably only got one show if he's the hard turns into the corner. Maybe, but he's probably coming up towards the uh, the Ghost, which is doing a... Looks like a two forward there. Great. There's one of those stress tokens. I, more than anybody, will attest... To the value of not super stacking your stress with a Hera. A lot of people love doing it, and I always suggest against it because the it, sooner you get it clear, the better. You get one of those crits that needs an action, and you are stuck. Yeah. Interesting. Hard to. Yeah, no, that was the right call. Ultimately, yeah. it's going to get his Wookiees back in formation. Yeah, but it looks like the uh, the other one might be banking. I'm not sure. Or it's, oh, no. I, uh, I just, it was just the angle was off on what I was seeing. That he's probably got one of those uh, Wookiees in arc. Well, target priority choices here, Devin, are really tough. Do you take the shots on the Ghost and get some damage in there? Number three. See, honestly, I would I would just take my chances on the crit. Now roll at the Ghost and reinforcing the back of both of them. Yeah. Right. So the reinforce. Let's run through that really quickly. Yeah. Uh, the reinforce is a very simple token, folks. It's got two sides to it. Reinforce the front. Reinforce the back. Really simple. If I reinforce the back and I cannot shoot at you and you shoot at me, my reinforce gives me an evade. If I reinforce the front and you shoot at me and I can shoot at you, then I get a free evade. It's only if I call the half of my base plate wrong with your position do so I not the, get an evade. So the front arc is actually much wider than the back arc because if your base is in the front arc, you're shooting at the front arc. If they can shoot you, you shoot at the front arc. Thanks, Mr. Math. No problem. I love geometry. I love. I did the best of geometry. Here we go. That looks like a Lots range. Lots of paint, not what Eric wanted to see. Nope. He takes two damage on that blue squadron. Number two. And that's the, the hurt boy. He's down to one hull. Now Question. he's got integrated astromech. He could integrate one of those. Question is whether or not Wookiee number two has number two T-70 in range here. Now I might have integrated one of those just in case. He, there you go. Dan reacquiring target lock with that fire control system. Giving him his action economy. So it's interesting here. I mean, n Wookie number three is really down to the, the last bit of health here. If Dan if Eric tries to burn down Wookie three and fails, he's in huge trouble. 
If he tries and shoot at the ghost with all three guns and just bank on hopefully rolling a crit so that the Wookiee Liberator takes a crit, and that crit happens to be a direct hit and he gets money. So I think they're checking arc and obstructed on number three. We'll all right, see. Eric shooting with number four, nothing. nothing. Ouch, his dice had cooled off big yeah, time. Yeah, looks like he's death. shooting at number three with number with uh, his T70s, so just one. It's not going to do anything because he's got the reinforce. Dan wanting to roll his green dice. He never gets to roll two green dice with those with those Wookies. Range two from number two on number three. All paint. That's what Eric. That's what Eric needed. He needs to get something off the board. One crit going through. It, this has got to be a direct hit for Eric to. to sort it of needs. To, I keep mean, it a direct even. a direct hit is what he needs here, Dev, and it's not. Sadly. Major hull breach. Everything face up. But Which that's is exactly what you don't need when it's one health left. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really do much there. Now, again, Dan forgetting he's got draw their fire, and he could have pulled that over to the other Wookiee. Yeah, unfortunately, you get a little bit uh, shaky in top uh, top cut matches, and then you end up, you know, forgetting your decloaks and bullshit. Anyway, folks, just a uh, recap on the voting here. So after all the votes came in, we had a total of 12 of you vote that Eric was going to take the match, and four of you that Dan was going to take the match. Interestingly enough, uh, I would probably say that they're pretty evenly matched at this point. We spoke a little bit earlier about the importance of uh, Eric, Eric having to, to clear a ship. He, he needed, to, needed to clear a ship here. Yeah. I mean, I agree with his logic about going after the Wookiees here, but I, I honestly would have probably tried to burn down the Ghost. Now, what do you expect from Eric next turn? Uh, uh, I'm thinking a one forward green from number three to block that 5k potentially from the local and then going in hot and fast as much as he can with number two and number four. Like if number two goes into block, fingers crossed. He has to try to block with number two here. But number Dan, two is damaged and he, he will not survive combat. If he, if he blocks, got, at least he's being useful. Dan's also got that target lock on the T70, right? So he has to overkill that X-Wing. That's on one hull. He's just got to push as much damage into it as he can. Right. Right? So he's forcing, well, I think, Eric's going to try and, and force Dan to take two shots to kill that one X-Wing with on floating around on one hull. Number two. You understand what I'm saying? You look confused, Tim. The, the uh, viewers can't see it. I've, I've just totally talked in circles around you. and uh, you I'm not entirely confused. sure what you're on about, mate, to be honest with you, but it's okay. Uh, as far so as Eric goes, I mean, like, he's got to clear the stress. He's got to get two into a position where he's being useful. Even if two just blocks the Wookiees and keeps them from taking their reinforced token, then he's going he's gonna to smack them right in the jaws. You know, yeah. it's it, those T-70s, he cannot burn two of them down in one turn. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's fine. Yeah. My point was, right, that big Lothal wants to push its, its four-die primary or its, its big dorsal turret damage into one of the more chunky X-Wings, right? And he may overkill the Blue Squadron novice. He may, if, he, if he's shooting with four or five dice into a one-hull ship, he's gonna be wasting a lot of hits. He's gonna be wasting an Ezra, you know, focus the crit, right? Ezra cannot be wasted. He's gotta get the crits across on these, uh, he's T-70, he's gotta get him to pop his Astromex before he needs to. I love what uh, Bad Cigar is saying on the chat. Eric needs to flip the table, grab the ghost, and run away. To be honest with you, uh, I've definitely had that feeling uh, in student Alan where he just wants to, like, oh, he's just like, forget so, this game. This is all bullshit. Ah, crazy. So here we have Eric just going in, just going straight forward, going for the block, going three, hard, three forwards from all the ships, just going in. Yeah, I mean, and, it's like uh, I said, two has to get in there and... and do work. He has yeah. to get in there and block. If he can negate those reinforced tokens, then those T-70s will have a chance uh, at, at burning down uh, the Wookiees. I mean, like, if... He's got to get something off the table. We, we really are cleaning up that stress. We, I, we really... Eric needs to really needs to see that Liberator 3 or the Lothal Rebel get down to half. And there's the 5K. It's now, such a tough call for Dan here. Now, this is Dan... Right. He's going with a 5K. Once again, judging but about... is he going to bump into his own Wookiee and get that shot on number two? Yes, he is. Yeah. It's so exactly that's Dan, Dan activating 
his Lothal Rebel first before his Wookiee Liberators, because if his Wookiee Liberators had moved, he wouldn't. Have, he would have been bumping into number two and wouldn't be able to shoot it. Yeah. So Wookiee one, uh, sorry, Wookiee number three, bumping, not moving. Doesn't fit in the intervening space. Well, this yeah. will be very interesting. We're gonna see. Uh, no, gonna way, no way in high heaven or hell does that fit in the intervening space there. Wow. That's that's something. All right. Sorry, uh, Rexlar Brath. I can't read the last word in that chat. It's it's got all stars on the end of it. But maybe try again. That's fine. The uh, the problem with the Wookiee trying to clear that big base plate with a two is that, again, you have to do the math on the geometry here. So you should be able to clear that, but because that T70 number two is there, the Wookiee, the only way you can do that is to get the big base plate out of there. Now, as far as number two goes... What are we doing here? We're going to try and find... I didn't even see what, what uh, he's move doing number a, two. He, they're both doing a hard two. I mean, they're doing the Wookiee Liberator move. <laughs> so, I mean, they're not going... Neither of them are going anywhere. This oh, the question to, is, is not whether... An, oh, is there any arc rotation? Uh, a little bit for sure, but does it matter? Like he's got all of the he's got all of Eric's ships in. Like we'll we'll train track it, put the other one back. Yeah, Evan's a master at this. Wow. All right. Let's see where it's gonna be. Oh my gosh! Wow! 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 That was really close. And that's that's great. Now, Eric's Eric's got a tough a tough decision to make here, whether he puts everything into the local can, or into one of the Wookies to take it off the board. But I doubt that X-wing number two is going to survive to make that choice. No, I mean X-wing two is right in front of the ghost, which means that the ghost has to shoot it too. So X-Wings 3 and 4 are going to get a chance to do work here. It's going to get a chance to clear number 3 with number 3 and put some damage into the Ghost with number 4. Ooh. Let's see. There it is, the front cannon. It's going to be able to use that target lock. Rerolling both of his dice. With fire control system. Forgetting he oh, rolling them into blanks. No. Forgetting he could have Ezred. See, so, you know what? Uh, a lot of people, nothing from yeah. Eric. Well, that was the Wookiee. That was the Wookiee three. That was Wookiee three. That's why we oh, rerolled the eyeballs with Wookiee Commando. Fair enough. Yeah. Boy, so, if I was that, uh, if I was so, that Wookiee, I'd be screaming. So we're seeing Eric spend his focus for one evade and integrate the other damage to stay alive. Rexlar Brown, I think there might be something wrong with your keyboard because the words you're typing might, I just they come out as like stars and stuff like that. But anyway, we'll just continue on. The uh, oh, hit so the crits going number, through here. Number two is off the board. The problem is, is that uh, Eric might actually. Oh, that was number two. He's just yeah. got to clear it. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah, well, that's what he. It's what Dan needed. He needed to get rid of number two here. Yeah. Let's just see if Eric could get back in this game by getting rid of that uh, that Wookie there. I at this point the decision's been made for him. He has to shoot Wookie three, just to with number three. I don't think number four has arc, so he's gonna be putting it into into the local. Here's Ooh. Dan. Oh, uh, just all paint. Double oh, okay. evades. That's what, we paint, needed. So That's what we needed. That's what we needed. Two damage onto looks like number three. That's Dan where the fire W. System repping is game schooled like a boss. Doing great. He's been uh, killing he it. He is a boss, of course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Kill it in the top eight. Oh, what a wonderful Wednesday evening down here at 401 Games there, Dev. Yep. People uh, playing all kinds of board games all over. And we got the PTL stream cut going right here. Got about, I'd say, at least 10 or 12 people watching the la match live here. Yeah, a couple of, a couple of games going, too. So let's uh, let's see where Eric decides to shoot. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got, uh, we've got some stress for the ghost to clear. I don't know if he's going to want to. You know, one forward might just keep him put. I think that if you, if you think about what the Wookiees could do by just staying where they are... Oh, oh, Eric can't this get those. Is not paint. what Eric needed to see. Three and four. Up oh, the shield from the ghost going down. He was shooting at it. Shooting at the ghost. One crit. Oh dear. Evan unfortunately is just not getting the paint on those red dice that he needs to keep the damage uh, up and keep the pressure up on Dan here. Well, I mean, draw their fire. 
Yeah, yeah, number two for sure. Can draw their fire. So the ghost did not lose a shield, and the Wookiee lost a the shield there instead. Wow. Stream viewers up to 125. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for chiming in. We have a question in chat uh, where 401 Games is located. 401 Games is located in downtown Toronto, Canada. The corner of Young and Wellesley. There you go. Just a block south of Wellesley on the west side of Young. There you go. Real close to the subway station. They got a great play space up here. We got about 100 board gamers, about a dozen X Wingers. Uh, quite a Wednesday night. Well, yeah, I mean, the PTL plays at lots of different schools across Toronto. We got yeah. uh, lots of different schools to play at Game School for sure. Well, yeah, there's Game School way in the East End at the core in the Port Union and Lawrence area, which is yeah. drawing in some players from Durham region, which is great. We've got uh, the downtown center game here. It's uh, usually Wednesday nights at 401 which is uh, we're looking for somebody to step up in the community and try and head up that game night there. Uh, we got face-to-face -to -face in the East End off of Woodbine Avenue and Danforth. And uh, Jeff Assiri and myself are going to start making appearances at X-Planet in Mississauga in the West End uh, starting are season you now? 11. Absolutely. That's, that's I'm still going to get out to face if I can, but Jeff and I have just talked about it. I work in Oakville. He lives in the West End. Yeah. Um, we want to get try some and more get more competitive well, matches out there at uh, X Planet. There's a lot of really good uh, players in Mississauga who are missing the uh, missing the opportunity to kick some ass and going to Mississauga instead of taking the trip all the way into Toronto like Eric has to do sometimes. So we figured, you know what, we'll bring the PTL to them. Now, uh, Tuesdays at Face, our institution here in Toronto, at Face to Face Games in the East End, uh, Woodbine and Danforth. And uh, I mean, some players, as you just mentioned, Jeff Asiri, travel for hours on transit and, and change their whole life schedules. You coming in from, from Oakville to, to play with the type of competitors we get at face to face in 401 games. All over the jeweler, Oakville baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's got quite a few locations now. Hey That's dad, so. can I run the new location? Oh yeah. I mean uh, Don't forget it's such a in. great community in Toronto. It, it's spread out over five or six stores. There's there's uh, the cliquey, when I talk to players from other cities, say Ottawa or Montreal, who we end up in uh, speaking with on a uh, 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 frequent basis, they often speak about the cliqueyness or or maybe the loyalty that some people have to stores. And I'm glad that we've not we've risen above that in Toronto, where the loyalty is to the to the league and rather to like I play at this store, the, the I play at that store. Sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off. That the loyalty is to each of us. Like you guys said it on the Sea to Sky podcast about how you know there's a lot of frustrations in the, in the game sometimes with uh with nim and 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 uh and gunboats and stuff like that and regardless of what the top tier looks like all of us uh in the in the toronto area and, and surrounding area montreal west ontario all that we all just love which is a good bunch of guys love getting together having yeah. some laughs keeping a pg-13 you know that kind of thing one of the best things about this community has been like the road trips that we've been able to organize you know put together 30 something guys to go down to Naboo in the United States and uh, 30 oh. guys in a bus to go down for our system open and we're uh, talking about a bus for worlds this year too we're talking about a bus for worlds if you're listening and you're Chicago. in Ontario and you want to go to Chicago. worlds yeah. we're going to stop in Chicago which means we'll be able to pick up some uh, Gold some, Squadron folk. some Yankee doodles oh, no, they, the Chicago is the Blackhawks they're the good team oh, okay. that's the, right. that's the yeah. good team that's there. the good team I, I'm a fan of that oh and, big 5k from Dan and that's really rough for Eric I mean he's not going to be able to to really eat a lot more of these four die hits. We got a we got a comment here from Globus Poland. Four Shesh, my friend. Welcome aboard from Poland. There you go. Um, just a big reminder and a big thank you to uh, all everybody watching from VWTV Live. Big reminder about uh, St. Patrick's Day, mm. which also ha oh my goodness. Oh, we've got Wookies, so we're rerolling with Wookies. This Look might at, be the game. Paint, 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 paint. My on goodness. Blue Squadron Three, I bet. Oh, one. He's already taken damage. He takes three more. That's some. So that's a shield and uh, a hit. Two crits into the hull. So what are we looking at? Looks like a blinded pilot in there. Two and blinded stun, pilots. Two blinded pilots or a oh, blinded, blinded pilot and a stun pilot. Wow. Console fire. Big, uh, big shout out. Big reminder about St. Patrick's Day, which also happens to be Canadian Nationals, uh, March 17th in Toronto. So are you flying Day 1A or Day 1B at Canadian Nationals? I'm going Day 1A. I'm going, going Day 1A. 1A. Yeah. Now so that is St. Patrick's Day. So we'll, correct. You're not flying. You're not going to be playing on Day 1B on the Saturday no, the after St. Patrick's the Day. The logic is, is stay sober until you're done, and then start St. Patrick's Day on the night, and don't finish to have to play <laughs> again on Sunday. Oh my gosh, that's uh, four onto one of the ships. 
Yeah, I agree with you, MBFIPR. That was probably a coffin nail, that clutch 5K. Dan has been, he picked the perfect spot on the map to go back and forth with his 5Ks and just keep well, the pressure up We on were Eric. talking about how open the map was at the beginning of the game, how good that oh. was for Dan. Evades yep. the crit, evades that. Way done, Eric. Okay, so Eric has go. I mean, like one last opportunity. He's alive, but barely. Does he even have arc on number three from number three? I don't, I don't think so. He might. Number, like, we it all know. look like it. They're picking up their dials. Clones cannot bear clones to live, but I just don't know. Dan's just going to... Dan's just going to 5K again, and there's just nothing that... Yeah, it's true. Got a chime uh, in from chat. Tron Triple Nine asking, "Would R two D two crew on a ghost work?" It does work. Uh, in my experience, any ship that has that many hull points, you will inevitably end up turning one of your cards face up with R two D two, and it will often be at a very inopportune time. Now, the the ghost loves crits, I believe. You the were just explaining this earlier, Tim. The ghost loves crits about as much as a sandpaper. Uh, how do I say that, PG-13? Anyway, <laughs> let's just skip that one, shall we? If you've watched Deadpool, you know what I'm talking about. So, where do you think Eric's going to go? What, like, if you were a Dan, if you were flying the Ghost right now, what would be a nightmare scenario for those X-Wings to be? The nightmare scenario for an X-Wing here. Uh, no, for the Ghost. Like, Where can the X-Wings go to put the most damage onto that Ghost? Honestly, Eric's in a really tough place. He's in a very, very tough place. I feel like if number four were to uh, bank left, he might get to trigger flight assist astromech with a barrel roll. Number three might, his talon roll left might actually fit. Just if he tried to tear, tear, uh, talon roll right between where the two Wookiees are meeting on number two's front left corner mm -hmm. I think I feel like the talent roll might fit there um, <laughs> sand, <laughs> no that's not a sandpaper, mas sandpaper <laughs> yeah. massage so it wasn't a sandpaper massage so <laughs> I mean Hingston. what I mean you're thinking he should try and maneuver in such a way that he can use his flight assist astromech to start setting up blocks but I just don't think that that's going to have that that's not going to have the returns that Eric needs right now he needs to kill a liberator and get the local to half without losing any ships just to stay in this game with 20 minutes remaining on the clock. I mean, the X-Wings are in a really tough spot here. Um, Dan's got all the time in the world. He's got all the positioning in the world. And the local isn't even into hell yet. So even if he manages, if Eric manages to kill both Wookiees and it's one T-70 X-Wing against the Ghost, I'd still call that for Dan in the long run. So I was saying earlier about how our, our stream chat all called Eric as having the... That's I mean, 12 to 4. When the game started, I was completely in the same position. I 100% thought that that would be the case. And interesting now, number four is going to get to trigger Flight Assist Astromech. Will he take the barrel roll left? Huh. Ooh. Tron Dan, triple... Dan Tron keeping up with his uh, fire control system there? Yeah, no, absolutely. So Tron triple nine, absolutely. There is 100% a crew version of R2-D2, including a astromech version of R2-D2. it may not be familiar to newer players, no, because, because it only comes in the Corellian Corvette. Yeah, it comes in a $100 ship, like 100 real person dollars, not 100 squad points. With two of the other best crew in the game, True. Han Solo and our, uh, Leia, of course. Leia, of course. Not C-3PO. Who not cares about him? It's Leia. She's the amazing one. Yeah. Once at the beginning of a round, you may treat, everybody gets to treat their red maneuvers as white maneuvers. Which for somebody like a Wookiee would be handy. Yeah. Now, how many points is that? I think she, she's oh. like five points. I think. Oh my God! It's uh, no, she's four. Four points. Four, four points. Somebody in chat correct me, but I'm pretty sure that I she's four points. I saw someone bring. That barrel roll in position is nuts. It's it's amazing. Right. Travis commenting here Our producer on the Travis, uh, amazing play barrel roll position. That's that's how amazing it is. I had a, I had a barrel roll like that in my game. It just felt so amazing. It fit just between <laughs> backdraft and a rock. And um, now he set up a beautiful kill box here for number three. Has to, has right? to. Yeah. Now, it, if the ghost doesn't kill number three before it shoots, if he's going to be able to get at least one Wookiee off the board. Question from chat from Alkaline Divide: Have anybody seen a good U-wing build or game? Answer: One hundred percent yes. If have you, you have ever seen uh, somebody named Don Nguyen, 
who plays uh, in Toronto occasionally. Yeah. He had a game. It was Snap Wexley, Wes Jansen, and Cassie and Andor, the, the U-Wing. Right. And uh, West had the stress bot, uh, Snap had PTL, and Cassian's just eating their stress every turn. It was, I didn't know what to do with it. I had two Phantoms and a, and a, and a shuttle, and he just beat me like I stole something. Oh my gosh. He tabernacked me in the face. I've flown uh, just like the generic Blue, Blue Squadron or Pathfinder with Wookiees is kind of okay. Um, the... the Mexican national champion, not this regionals, but the regionals before came and showed up and went four and two, I believe, with uh, Cassian Andor. Correct. Repping his. Uh, I actually played him round one. He had a ghost and a Ewing. It was a nasty list. Yeah. I had uh, Fen Guri and pre nerf Manaru. Number, number three though. might clear. No, oh. e Evans. E Evans yeah. done enough of those maneuvers on Vassal. He knows it won't clear. It's just a question of arc rotation at that point. We had two judges, a player. It's. Uh, Lots of hands in this game. Well, to be fair, Aaron is less of a judge and more of a gushing fan at this point because the last two games that we've streamed <laughs> in the past hour and a half are like his wet dreams of X-wing. This is just like lots his, of X wings This on is the table. like no, no Nim, no like TLTs. This is just like Ark's only golden content here, and he's loving it. So this is great. If the ghost, oh, he's doing another 5K. Yep, ghost bumps. No, now they're not even measuring. They just. It's just assuming it bumps. Yeah, I don't think it was a 5K. I'm sure even if it was a forward. Now, when, when, unfortunately, I, I feel that Blue Squadron Novice 3 is probably going to die. Is dead. Yeah. He's got nine dice on him this round, and, and Dan's only got to push through two two damage. Well, we should take the opportunity to thank our viewers then, And Jeff. when Dan rolls like that, he gets to roll one Wook hit. All those eyeballs coming back. Two Wookie, hits and a crit. Wookiee Commandos. Oh my gosh. Eric taking his sweet time to roll. Gets the paint. Takes the crit. Will One. pop the I droid. Mean, he's got to pop the droid, no matter what. Major explosion, looks like. On number four. It looks like he's shooting at number four. Yeah, the Wookiee shot at number four. That's why he re-rolled all the eyes there. Major yep. explosion does not go off. Pops the droid. Interesting. Oh, he was saving the droid for the extra. It's a good call. Save the droid for the major explosion. Yeah, so... Yeah. I mean, that was an interesting decision from Dan. I mean, that's the ship that can shoot. I mean, that's a good call. Five dice. Range one from the ghost. There's Ezra. Ezra the crit. Hit double crit. On number three. Now, Eric's got to roll like a god here. Just he's got to get double. He's got to get two natty evades. No, he's got to focus. He can roll. Uh, oh. He needs all paint, and that was not all paint. That's just. Now goes number three. Dead X wing. So we're gonna see if Eric gets some pride here. Uh, gets to go range one back on number three take down one of the Wookiees at least. Now, chat's talking about our suggestions for the U-Wing. They're looking for an effective way to fly it. There is not an effective way to fly it. It is a bad ship. You and I had a pretty good game when I had the U-Wing, remember? Yeah. And you had Emon. So, this is number two, shooting at number four. It was a Wookiee, final yeah. Wookiee Liberator. And that's, Eric's oh. going to have, he has to spend it or he's going to die. So, he's going to spend it. It's okay, no problem. He'll just roll three hits and a crit. Pop the Astromech. Uh, nothing. Eric's red dice continuing to well, not. The, Wookie, the Wookiee's got a 60% chance to die right here. It's not a crit, so he's got to take it, and he's taking it. I mean, Eric's on the board, and he's got 28 points of MOV with 15 minutes remaining in the game. And, man, I uh, I don't know, Tim. I it's, you know what? It's tough to say how. Both you know, of these players have had a fantastic season. Absolutely. Um, Eric going 6-0, not even playing seven games. I know what a jerk. Get into the cut. <laughs> but that in the in the PTL. Oh, I got to, I'm fourth overall. I played six games, whatever. But that's but that's why and we we extended the, the league season two weeks over Christmas. Yeah. Make, everyone's a little bit busy. Definitely. And uh, I think you know we we incentivize playing by the PTL rules. So you get bonus points this season. You got a bonus point for playing a quad jumper. You got a bonus point for playing a uh, an original trilogy match, and you got a bonus point for playing Mercs. And Eric got all of his bonus points, got three matches, and uh, was pretty safe going into that last season and uh, last that last couple of weeks of uh, the season. And had another couple players, got some more games in. You know, uh, there were some people, Jackie Long, John the Woodhouse, chomping at the edge right there of top eight. I was so rooting for John Woodhouse. I really wanted him to get that last uh, we match all in. Were. I think if he only needed like to win by 60 MOV to make the cut, uh, it was really good. But you know what? We've had such a great ratio of new players and their completion rates. 
yeah. for season 11. We've got some interesting stuff to roll out. We're not going to announce it tonight. You have to keep uh, your eyes peeled on Star Wars Gaming Ontario and yep. the prototype Toronto League Facebook pages for announcements on season 11. But although the requests for uh, weapons disabled tokens have been hot and heavy, so we uh, we'll have to see. I refuse to support K Wing players. Yeah, but <laughs> now that Scum and and, uh, and Imperials oh yeah, have the Imperials the disabled token. Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah, you're right. No, I know. I actually haven't had a good chance to try my uh, my Camigula fighter yet. Especially with the nerf to Tarani's uh, pilot ability. No, but that's how I would have always rolled it. That's that, that's I, how I would see it. Honestly, I think Dalen Oberos as the Camigula fighter is better anyway. His pilot ability is more synergetic with um, his bullseye firing arc and the ordnance uh, capabilities of the ship. At the yeah. start of combat phase, if there's somebody in your bullseye arc, you get a Targa lock on him and shoot whatever you have equipped. I think that, yeah. works, that works better, you know? Oh, I don't disagree there, Tim. So we've got the last activation phase likely coming up. I mean, so even Dan if, even if there. Eric blinded pilots, one of them, um, he shoots after them. So. Well, I imagine we're going to see a 5K here from the from the Ghost. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason not to. So um, just a last-minute reminder to everybody watching uh, as well that Canadian Nationals are coming up on St. Patrick's Day, May, uh, March 17th. They're going to be at the Sheridan Centre in Toronto. Tickets are available online. Breakoutcon.com. Uh, Breakoutcon.com. Uh, VWTV Live will be streaming as much content as we can. Uh, we're going to try and twist their arms to uh, get some of the Swiss. They're going to try and cover as many events as possible. Uh, but we're not too sure about the. Um, you know. uh, the VGTV Live likes to cover as many uh, FFG events as they can, or different. There's that's game. Handshake across the board. And there we it's go. It's a great game. It's a great, great game. game. Thanks right for having up. me, Jeff.